So, questions up to this point now? Yes? Can you? So the previous slide is like um, the alternative one for the people. Right, yeah. So I'm, I'm giving you sort of one example that goes in, in that's kind of indicates one claim and another example that indicates the other claim, right? And sort of pointing you to the two warrants that would that would shift the evidence in one direction or the other. Right? So that you know, so the the first example is really well, it's actually her claim that, you know, so I guess the, the evidence is really the way in which Helen Keller learns language from Ann Sullivan, right? So that's the example, that's the, that's the evidence, right? She, Helen Keller doesn't learn language until Hel, uh, Ann Sullivan comes to teach her language, right? Uh, and so I think that's the evidence. And then Keller, on the one hand, is laying out this claim, I couldn't have learned language without my teacher, right? Therefore, language must be taught. Right? But <clears throat> there's this other way of reading that same evidence, which is to say that we're going to read Ann Sullivan's interaction with Helen Keller not as teaching. We're not going to like sort of, we're seeing what's going on and we're not going to say this equals teaching, but rather we're going to say this equals a community of speakers. Right? And that, <laughs> so that the claim then would be, the alternative claim is you don't need a teacher in order to learn language, you just need a community of speakers, if, if you've got humans, right? That humans innately have this ability to develop human language. All they need to do is have other humans around and they will naturally develop language whether they're taught it or not, right? And, and which would, which would kind of indicate that language is a kind of instinctual thing perhaps in humans that they just do automatically. Right. Okay, so does, does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. Uh, what is the relationship between linguistic relationships and object relationships for Keller? So this is an example of the, when she's pinning words to the, to the objects. Yes, um, your name is? Jacob. Jacob. Okay, yeah, so, um, so the relationships between words are a kind of indication of the relationships between objects, right? So there's a, there's a kind of correspondence between the relationship between sentences and the relationship between objects. It's just that words you can manipulate and the objects you don't necessarily, you, you, you could manipulate the, the objects themselves also, but you could um, by, by using words, you can kind of imagine the manipulation without actually having to do the manipulation, so that you have all sorts of different ways of relating to that reality, right? So you can sort of, you know, whatever. Instead of just saying, the doll is on the bed, you can say, I, I wish the doll were on the bed, or something like that, that you, you couldn't do with objects, right? Uh, which are sort of trapped in their present, right? So there's, a, there's this relationship that's set up in which the, the, the relationships between words can stand in for the relationships with, between objects and provide, can, can detach those relationships between objects from the present situation, okay? Um, so what are the two interpretations of what Ann Sullivan provides to Keller in order that Keller can learn language? Yes, Kate? <coughs> okay, yes. Yeah, so one, one interpretation is, is language needs to be taught, and then the other one is that language is innate. Right? That, you know, either, you know, perhaps you need a teacher in order to learn language, or, in fact, it just, it just comes because you're, you know, you're, you're a human, and as long as you're with other humans, uh, that you'll develop language. You don't have to actually be taught. Okay, so those, those are two ways of of thinking about Helen Keller's experience. 